Today, we'll be creating this particular sci-fi VJ loop. You can use it in various situations, but the idea is to learn the techniques that are being used while creating the geometry node structures. So without getting into further details, let's begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to keep the default cube to add in the geometry node object. So we'll click and drag from the junction of those two windows to create this new panel and switch it to the geometry node editor. Then we can press this button to add in a new geometry node tree. And finally, we can delete the default cube by getting rid of the group input by tapping the letter X. Now we can press Shift A and search for a grid and we can plug the mesh into the geometry. Now if you actually go to the wireframe over here, you can see that the grid has an extra vertex in the center. We don't want that, so we'll just change the vertices to 2 on both the axes and that removes the central vertex and we're left with just the plane. Apart from that, I also want the plane to be twice the length on the Y axis, so I'll change the Y size to 2 and that way we get this particular rectangle. Now I want to inset the faces but there is no inset node so what we have to do is we have to search for an extrude mesh node and plug that right after the grid and it extrudes it in the z-axis. We don't want that so we're just going to change the offset scale to 0. Now we have two edges on each of these edges. So what we can do is scale them. So we'll search for a scale elements node, plug that in here, and we can change the selection to just the top. And that way, when we scale it down, it actually insets the way we want it to. However, the problem is since we scaled it on the Y axis, the insetting is not uniform. You see it's lesser on the X and more on the Y. To fix that, what we'll do is instead of checking uniform, we'll say single axis. And right now the axis is set to X. So this is X, Y, Z. So on the X, it's in setting by one. And then we can select the scale elements node, press shift D, plug it in here. Again, use the top to plug it into the selection. And this time, instead of having the X as the axis, we'll keep the X as zero and we'll keep the Y as one. And that way it's going to scale on the Y axis, but we'll scale it only by 0 0.9. And now we have extrusion of one on each of these axes. Now we need to actually get rid of the central face. If you go back to solid view, you can see that it's still a complete face. We want to remove that central one. So what we can do is press shift A and search for a delete geometry node, plug that right in and change it from point to face. And for the selection, you can again use this top selection of the extrude mesh node. And there we have it. Now to actually bevel this, we can simply search for a subdivision surface node, plug that in and you see it divides equally on all of the areas and we don't want that we actually want some edge crease to exist so what we'll do is just increase the edge crease and increase the levels of the subdivision so we'll increase the levels maybe up to five and then increase the edge crease till we get a shape that we want so i think an edge crease of 0 0.55 is all right now that we have this particular shape we need to extrude this on the z-axis to give it some thickness which is essentially like adding in a solidify modifier so let's again Take this extrude mesh from here, press shift D, plug that in right over here. After the extrude mesh is placed, you can increase the offset scale this time to actually lift it up. So I've given it an offset scale of 0 0.1, but the problem with this is if you actually look underneath, it's pretty weird. So what we can do to remove all of this weird geometry is just cover it up with another face. And also we can uncheck individual and that actually saves all of this geometry from being created at all, which will help render everything out faster. So we need to cover this up. So to do that, we'll again move the group output to the side, press shift A and search for a join geometry node and join it in with the original shape that we had, which was over here after deleting the central face. So let's just take this and plug that into the join geometry, but we need it to be subdivided as well. So we'll go ahead and use this particular value in the join geometry. Now that we have this, we also need it to be shaded in smooth, but we can add that later on once we finish adding all of the other geometries as well. So the first thing is we want to actually duplicate this and rotate it to create a triangle. So we can search for a transform geometry node along with another joint geometry node because we want this to be added on to the original mesh that we currently have. So let's take the joint geometry, shift D, plug that in right here and then plug this transform geometry into the geometry as well as the output from this as the input. Now let's transform it by rotating it on the Y by 60 degrees. And you have to make sure that you use the rotation and not translation. So translation is going to be zero for now. Rotation on the Y by 60 degrees. And now we have to lift it up on the Z axis and move it on the X axis. So we'll press one to go into our front view and then just lift it up on the Z till it comes up just above the surface. So I'll go with 0 0.54. 
and then move it on the X till it again aligns up perfectly. So 0.25 is what I'll go with. So this is how it looks like. Now we need to do the same thing again, but towards the left. So we'll take this transform geometry, press shift D, bring it down here, plug this geometry in here and the geometry into the joint geometry node. But this time we have to rotate it by minus 60 degrees and then translate on the X by minus 0.25. And that way we should get a perfect triangle. Now, in case you feel like, okay, this area is actually touching, whereas these are not, all you have to do is just bring it down on the Z to 0.533. And we have to do the same thing for the one on top over here as well. So 0.533, and that would help cover it up. However, I think leaving a little gap is better. So I'll keep these distances at 0.54 and I'll move it on the X to 0.255. And we have to do the same thing for the bottom as well. So minus 0.255 and Z of 0.54. Now you have a little gap between all of them. And this is the initial shape that you have. Now I want another instance of this. So I'll go ahead and just press shift A, set position node. You could use a transform geometry, but I'll use a set position for now. And then duplicate the joint geometry node, plug this into the geometry and the geometry goes into the joint geometry. And now we have another duplicate exactly where it is. So let's go ahead and just offset it on the Y by two units and you get this particular shape. In fact, you could do this again to create three variations. So let's press Shift D, bring it down here, take this, plug it in, and here make the offset on the Y four. And that way we get three instances. Now we want the exact same thing, but scaled up on every axis except for the Y axis and reversed. So again, we'll use this transform geometry node, press Shift D, bring it here, and then just plug this up here and then take the joint geometry, Shift D, bring it here, Take this geometry, plug it in there, and of course, make all of these zero initially and scale it up on everything but the Y axis. So we'll scale it on the Z by four and on the X by four. And this is what we have. Then we can rotate it on the Y by 180 degrees, and then we can just lift it up on the Z. So let's press one and just bring it up on the Z till we're happy with the positioning. So I think something like this is all right. Of course, you could do the math to figure out the exact value to make sure that everything is equidistant from each other, but I don't think we have to get into all of that for now. Now that you have this particular shape set up, we can go ahead and add in some particles. We'll use the same method that we generally use. So we'll press Shift A, search for a join geometry node so that we can join the particles with our original mesh, but we already have a join geometry, so let's not do that. So we'll press Shift A and search for a cylinder, which is what we're going to use as the object to release the particles from. Since this is triangular in shape, we'll make this also triangular by reducing the vertices to three. We don't need any fill caps, so we can change it to none. But since we're going to convert it to a volume, we'll keep it at n gone. Since the entire length of this is six units, we'll change the depth to six. And then we'll just plug this into the joint geometry so that we can see what we're working with. This is what we have. So we'll go ahead and search for a transform geometry node, plug that in here so that we can rotate it on the X by 90 degrees. And this is what we have. So we'll have to rotate it on the Y by 90 degrees. And then we can just scale it on everything but the Y axis. So we'll make this scale on the X and Y because we've rotated it on different axes. So it's no longer going to be Y as this. The Z is this particular axis. So X3, Y3. And there we have this shape. Now we just have to lift it up and place it appropriately. So press one to go into the front view, switch on transparency so that you can actually see where everything is placed and then just lift it up on the Z axis. So we'll place it about here and that's all you have to do. We also have to move it on the Y axis. So we'll press three to go to the side view and then just move it on the Y till it perfectly aligns itself. Now that everything's aligned, we can go ahead and convert this to a volume. So search for a mesh to volume node and then again, convert this back to a bunch of points. So We'll press Shift A and search for distribute points in volume node, plug that in there. And then you can increase the density if you feel like it. Maybe I'll make a density of five. And here we have all the points. Now we'll go ahead and convert the points into actual meshes by searching for an instance on points node, plug that in right there. And we need an instance object. So we'll press Shift A and search for an icosphere. We'll increase the subdivisions to something like three. Radius is gonna be really small, so 0 0.01. Plug that into the instance. And now we have the icospheres. However, I want the icospheres to have some variation in the scale. So in the instance on points node, we're gonna play around with the scale. We'll press Shift A and search for a random value node. Keep it on float so that it changes equally on all of the different axes. Just plug that into the scale. Now I don't want any of them to become zero, so we'll change the minimum to 0 0.1 and the maximum to maybe 1.1. And there we have varying sizes of particles. We can switch off X-ray and this is what we have. 
Next up, to actually finish off the loop, we'll have to duplicate this. So to do that, all we have to do is press Alt D to create a linked duplicate. Make sure you press Y so that it snaps to the Y axis and just move this by six units. And then press Shift R to repeat the action. Maybe we can repeat it two or three times. I'll go ahead with four instances. And then when you actually look at it through the camera view, it'll look like it's going all the way to infinity. So we can actually start off the animation now. To do that, we'll set all of our animation and render defaults. In our render properties, we'll switch on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, as well as some motion blur. Then we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. The end frame is going to be 300 so that it's a 10 second long animation. The output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format is going to be FFmpeg video and the encoding container has to be changed from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality is going to be perceptually lossless. Then we can select our camera, press Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation. RX 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees on the X axis. Then we have to grab it up on the Z axis so we can press 3 to go into the side view and just Press G, Z and lift it up to approximately the middle of this triangle and then G, Y and bring it to the start, which is going to be minus one meters from where it was. Now we can press zero to go into the camera view and with the camera selected, go to the camera properties, change the focal length down, maybe 25 and then go to viewport display, passport out all the way to one. Then we can increase our timeline a little bit, go back to frame zero, press I for the location and rotation, then go to frame 300 and then just go G, Y, six, because that is exactly one step forward and press enter and then rotate on the Y axis by 360 degrees and then press I location and rotation. Then down here, we can press T and change the interpolation to linear so that it becomes a smooth loop when we actually do it. And that looks absolutely fine for what I wanted to create. However, the one thing that I forgot to do was back in geometry nodes, I haven't actually set this to shade smooth. So we'll select this again. And after everything, after the joint geometry node, we'll just search for a set shade smooth node and plug that right in. And that way everything gets its smooth shading. We also have to give this the materials. So we'll go ahead and press shift A and search for a set material node and plug that in right here, shift D here, shift D here. So these are the spheres that are present. These two are for our inner triangles and outer triangles. So both of these are gonna get the same material. Of course, you could change it up if you wanted to. So I'm gonna actually create three different materials. So to actually start the materials, we'll first change the viewport shading to rendered so that we can actually see the changes in the material. Then we can go to the material tab and there's already one default material. We'll press the plus two more times to add in two new slots. And then we'll select each of them and give them new materials. Now. The default material, we'll call it to inner. Material 001, we'll call that outer. And material 002, we'll call those spheres. Now, again, this node is the outer one. So we'll give this the outer material. This one is for the inner ones. So we'll call this inner. And then the last one is the spheres. So we'll call this spheres. Now we can change this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and actually start messing around with the materials. Before I delete the light, I'll add in the materials so that we can actually see what we're doing. And then we will remove the light and add in our own lights in a while. So first up, we have the inner material. We can press period on the numpad to get everything into view and just resize everything so that we have more space to work with. I'll go ahead and increase the metallicness to something like 0.9 and reduce the roughness to 0.3. Apart from that, I'll press shift A and search for a Voronoi texture and then press shift D to duplicate it, plug the distance into the vector, and then plug the output of this distance into a color ramp just for better control and plug the output of this into a bump node. And it should be the height of the bump node. And then we can plug the normal into the normal. Now we have to change each of the Voronoi textures from Euclidean to Chebyshev. And after changing both of them to Chebyshev, you have to play around with the scales. So I'll go ahead and increase the scale on this one to something like 40 and I'll reduce the scale on this one to maybe something like two. Along with that, the strength, I don't want it to be this strong, so I'll make the strength 0.2. And then if I switch off overlays, you can see what we have as the material for this particular object. Now, I don't want this transition to be there to make it look like a slope. So I'm just gonna bring in the black and bring in the white so that it's less of a transition and more like separate panels being placed. However, there still should remain a little bit of transition. so. I'm not going to change it constant. Now this is the material that I'm happy with, but I want to also decrease the base color and make it a lot darker. So maybe a value of 0.6 is what I'll go with. The next thing is the material for the outer panels. For the outer panels, I want them 
to have certain spots that are emissive but overall i want the metallicness to be fairly high and the roughness to be fairly low but i'm gonna press shift a and search for a voronoi texture and i'm gonna press shift a and search for a color ramp so that we have better control i'm gonna use the color value of the voronoi texture and then control shift click the color ramp with the node wrangler switched on to see what we have what i'll do is i'll decrease the randomness all the way to zero so that it becomes squares but the squares are too large so i'm gonna change the scale up to something like 150 and now we have tiny squares now if i change it from linear to constant i can actually control how many of the squares actually appear by just playing around with this slider so i'll go to something like that but i'll also increase the scale maybe 100 so i'm going with a value of 20 and i'm just bringing this in so that we have a few squares that are lit up and this is what i'm going to plug into the emission but i obviously don't want them to just be white i want them to be either red or blue so i'll press shift a and search for a color ramp and for the factor i'm going to actually use a noise texture so press shift a and search for a noise texture plug that into the factor change this from linear to constant so that it's going to be either this or that bring this to a position of 0 0.5 so that they're equally weighted change the white to a blue and the black towards a red now that you have this you can mix this color ramp with this color ramp by using a mix node so search for a mix node and change the type from float to color. After that, plug that in here, plug this in here, and make sure that we change the type from mix to color. And that way, the white areas are provided with this color and increase the factor all the way to one, and then control shift click the principled BSDF. And you can see how certain squares are lit up as red and some of them are blue. However, I want the strength to be much higher. So I'm going to increase the strength to something like 20. Now I can go ahead and just remove the light from our scene. And this is what we have for now. The next thing that I want to do is change this shader editor from object to world and reduce the world color all the way to black. And also press shift A and search for a volume scatter node decrease the density to 0.1 and plug that into the volume. Now to actually get this volume to have really nice effect, we need two lights. So we'll go all the way back to zero. We'll press shift A, light, search for a point light, and then press alt G to clear its location. Switch on overlay so that you can see where it is. Press GZ and bring it up. And we'll press GY to move it back as well. Then you can press GX to move it to the side and then change the color to maybe a blue on the left then press shift d x move it to the other side and change the color to red now both of these i feel like are still too close to the camera so i'll just press gy and pull it even further behind and i don't want them to be in this region so i'm just going to scale it on the x to move them further out towards the side now that you have these two set you can control click the camera in the outliner and then press Control p set parent to object so now they're parented to the camera now when you actually play the animation you'll see what we have the last thing is i want these particles to actually be a little bit more dense and i need to give them the material so let's go back to the cube by selecting it and then going to spheres and changing this from world to object and it's going to be a fairly simple material in the principal psdf itself i'm going to increase the color all the way to one and then increase the metallic value to maybe 0 0.9, reduce the roughness to 0 0.2. And then they'll have their own reflections as well, which just makes it look a little better in my opinion. However, I do want them to be a little more dense. So I'm gonna change this back to the geometry node editor and go all the way to this mesh to volume and distribute points in volume node and increase the density to something like 10. And there we have even more particles coming in. Now, I guess that's all there is for this particular tutorial. The only thing you have left to do is press render animation. Hopefully you learned some cool techniques from that video and you learned how you can create a very long geometry node tree, but essentially if you know what you're doing, it's just simple add-on process and you can actually create anything. Geometry nodes is super powerful and I'm so happy that Blender brought that in. I'm gonna keep making tutorials like this and one video is being released every single day. So do subscribe and watch through other playlists of mine in case you actually like this one. Until the next video comes out, keep creating and stay creative.